Okay, so in this video, we will look at a few examples of simplifying the square root of an integer, and by that I mean rearranging the expression so that in the end, the square root is on the smallest positive integer. Since the square root is the inverse of the square function, the idea is to factor from the original integer perfect squares so that those factors will cancel the square root. Let's start with a very simple example. So the square root of 9 is equal to 3. And this should be clear because 3 squared is equal to 9, right? So when you ask what is the square root of 9, you are asking for an integer squared that will equal 9. You can also think of it in this way. If the root of 9 is some quantity, right? So you say, okay, root of 9, say equals x. Then you can square both sides, right? If this equals this, then you can do the same thing on both sides, which will preserve the equality. So if you square the left-hand side, this will yield the same thing as squaring the right-hand side. But by definition, the square root is the inverse function of the square. So these two will cancel. And you're asking what number x has the property that x squared is 9. And of course, the answer is 3. And that's why the root of 9 is 3. You can also view it this way. The root of 9 equals the root of, and now rewrite 9 as 3 squared. And again, by definition, the square root is the inverse of the square function. So if you take 3, then square it, then apply the inverse transformation, the square root, it cancels, and you're left with 3. And you can also view the same process, thinking of the square root as a power of 1 half, and you get the same result. So if you say root of 9, well, the square root is a power of 1 half. Now we write 9 as 3 squared. And now we have a double exponentiation. We took 3, raised it to the power of 2, and raise the whole thing to the power of one-half. But as we've seen before, when you double exponentiate an expression, you can combine the exponents by multiplying the two together. So we have two times one-half, but two times a half is one, so the answer is simply three. So again, the root of nine is three. Now for us, we'll think of it this way. The square root is the inverse of the square function. So if you take the square root of something squared, the square and the square root both cancel, and you're left with the given integer. So let's look at slightly less trivial problems. Let's start with, say, the root of 63. Well, thinking of factoring 63 and hopefully looking for perfect squares, because only a perfect square will cancel the square root. So if we factor 63, we know it is 9 times 7. But 9 is a perfect square, right? 9 is 3 squared times 7. 7 is not a perfect square, but we know that we can distribute a square root on a product of terms. So this is the square root of 3 squared times the square root of 7. The root of the inverse function of the square, so they cancel. And so we're left with 3 times the root of 7. So 3 root of 7 equals root of 63. What about the root of, say, 125? Well, if we factor 125, this is 5 times 5 times 5, so it's 5 cubed. Now, we don't have here a perfect square, so we can't just cancel this with the square root. But if we simply split the 5 cubed as a 5 times 5 squared, now we have here a perfect square. So we can split the square root. So we'll have root of 5 times the root of 5 squared. The root cancels the square. And in the end, we're left with, well, root of 5 times 5. I'll write the 5 first. So 5 times root of 5. Let's do one last example. What about the root of 180? 
Again, we're going to try and factor 180 so as to obtain some factors as perfect squares. Well, an obvious factorization is 180 is 18 times 10, but 18 is 2 times 9, so we obviously have 2 times 9 times 10. So far we have a perfect square in 9, not in 10 and not in 2, but if we factor 10, 10 is 2 times 5. So we have 2 times 9 times 2 times 5. And now we can collect the two twos together. So we have the square root of 2 times 2 is 2 squared times 9 is 3 squared and then the leftover 5. So if we distribute, and here I'll be a little slicker, so we'll have the root of this times the root of this times the root of this. The root of 2 squared is 2. The root of 3 squared is 3. And the root of 5 stays root of 5. And 2 times 3, of course, is 6, so we're left with 6 times root of 5. And that's it. So whenever you have the square root of an integer, to simplify, to obtain an expression where the square root is on the smallest possible integer, you have to try and factor the integer and locate perfect squares as some of its factors. And those will be the factors that will cancel the square root. And that's it.